What's up, everybody? Andrew Mahone here with Tricky Jim. Going to be playing a game on PTCGO today, and I'm excited and also kind of devastated about the decks we're going to be showing off in the next couple of days. They are all Shrine decks for those of you guys that were able to peep what did well at the Brazilian Regional Championship. It is pretty much just Shrine City everywhere. There are Shrine of Punishment decks. I think seven of the top eight decks were all Shrine of Punishment decks. Absolutely crazy. So we've got two main Shrine of Punishment archetypes uh, that we're going to be showing off in the next couple of days. Today we have got Nicholas's top four Buzzwell, uh, Buzzwell Weavile deck. So it's got Buzzwell and Weavile and Shrine of Punishment in the same deck. And I love this list. It uses the Macargo engine uh, as well as a Ranguru in order to draw cards. Absolutely fantastic. Cool stuff. And then uh, Buzzwell Garbodor ended up winning the event. This list, as it's built, uh, runs actually not too great against Buzzwell Garbodor. So. Um, because of that psychic weakness. So they're really able to take advantage of your Pokemon, of your Buzzwolves, who are the heavy hitters in these matchups here. So looks like we're playing against Tapu Bulu, and this is a card that I've heard getting a decent amount of hype as well. I'm gonna start off with an Acro Bike here and just see what we get. I could just Ultra Ball for Pokemon and Lily, I guess, but I kinda of wanna see just where we're going here. We've got a Shrine of Punishment, so I'm gonna go ahead and just grab that right off rip here. Then I'm going to Ultra Ball away uh, the Guzma and the Unit Energy. And then I am going to, uh, yes, we're going to do that. We're going to go grab ourselves a Buzzwell. We're going to be leading with Buzzwells here. I don't think that we'll have too many um, abilities in play. I mean, Weavile could close out the game if my opponent has to put Weaviles down, things like that. But the purpose of playing Tapu Bulu over a card like potentially Rayquaza, right, who is just the obvious choice for many of these Vika Volt decks is just that we have the obvious strength of, I'm going to go grab myself a Ranguru as well, um, the obvious strength of not having that ability. So Weavile, obviously, is an incredible partner for Buzzwell. So many decks play so many abilities, and the draw engines are, are just weak, right? Every draw engine relies on abilities pretty much, except for that second place uh, Buzzgarb list, which just plays like a, a huge amount of supporters. I'm going to be showing off that list tomorrow. So let's see here. We've got ourselves Switch. I'm actually just going to hang on tight so that my uh, Buzzwall doesn't get hit uh, because that Buzzwall's hit points is actually super relevant. We want this Buzzwall to have 130 hit points, and the reason we want this to have, and I forgot that they were going to be playing Aether Paradise, right? So maybe I should have gripped that stadium, but that's fine. Uh, I actually don't, you know, I mean, I'm not sure what a blue list is going to end up looking like just because there's no real standard for a Bulu list. I've seen some lists using Steven's Resolve to set up that Bulu deck, right? So they're getting a turn to uh, Bulu here, just like guaranteed, which is pretty impressive. Like we know that they're going to hit that. So that is pretty cool. Now with this hand, I actually do have the option to go get my shrine back. So that's pretty cool. I also have switch. So I can get myself another Buzzwall which is something that I want. Uh, we're gonna nest ball for that. Um, oh, I shouldn't have nest balled quite yet. That's fine, I, I didn't count my cards correctly. So we can uh, switch and then I can ultra ball into, I guess it doesn't really matter. I don't need to Cynthia. Um, so I can just switch ultra ball away, nest ball. That's fine actually, I'm, I'm fine with that. So let's just switch here. And then we're gonna Ultra Ball away these guys, and we're gonna go get ourselves a Macargo, and then we're gonna smooth over, we're gonna put Shrine onto the top of the deck. I have no idea how much, you know, I have no idea how many uh, Aethers this deck is going to play, so that is something that we kinda have to look out for. I mean, obviously, I can definitely see myself getting stuck if this is something that they're gonna be having in high counts here. But uh, that being said, I should draw into my stadiums better than they should draw into theirs. But since they did get the first stadium down and into play, 
uh, they are going to have an advantage there. So, you know, as far as the stadium war goes, and you guys also saw that I did prize one of my stadiums as well. So we should be in a situation where we could two-hit KO this. However, my opponent can craftily, they have the other Aether in hand. They probably Stevens resolved for it if they just had another piece of their Bulu in hand like that. So that is pretty impressive there. And they're just going to be able to strong charge and they'll probably just Tapu Wilderness. So that is pretty crazy. They're pretty impressive. You can see that they're setting up with very little, uh, you know, very little uh, draw. I mean, really, they just, Steve Strahl started off with a nest ball, good to go. And now they'll probably, oh, their nature's judgment. They're going to save their wilderness for later. So that's interesting because they uh, are going to get knocked out this next turn. So they're just going to have to promote a, a Vika Volt, which seems suboptimal, especially since I've got this Buzzwell in hand here and can just proceed to, you know, sledgehammer that Vika Volt for knockout. So we're going to acro bike first. I don't think I actually want to smooth over quite yet. I want to see what we get off of this. We've got a Kakui and an acro bike. I think I just want another acro bike and we're going to keep digging here. I need to hit um, a stadium again and an energy. So I want uh, I want an 80. Uh, I want the stadium. Let's see. So we're doing 30, 60. Um, if I actually get the, I might not, if I get the beast energy, I might not need the stadium. So we're doing 30, 60, 90, 110. If I do 110, 110, yes. If I just smooth over the, that's fine. Yeah, I can just smooth over that and get the beast energy. We're going to go ahead and acro bike again, though. We got the stadium, so I don't need my beast energy yet, which is great. So I'm just going to save that. That's cool. And now we can smooth over, and I'll just sledgehammer for 30, 60, 80. Perfect math. We've got this. So now, and you can see how beautiful this draw engine's working. I can just go get the exact pieces I need out of my deck. Totally fixes uh, the fact that we have suboptimal draw supporters, right? So that's that's great. We're just going to instruct here, knock out this Bulu. So interesting maneuver, not using the um, not using that. Uh, you know, that GX attack there. So I'm wondering how that's going to work out for my opponent. I'm just going to play the Kakui just to see more cards this turn because I do need to continue to string attackers here. I want to make sure that I just eventually got my hands onto a Cynthia. So I'm feeling more confident now with this hand, you know, that I can respond to whatever my opponent uh, does this next turn. Even if they, you know, I don't think they're not going to be able to electro cannon me. They will need to get maybe another Bulu here and just have to have Guzma in hand. But what in the world is this? I did not know this was a thing. So we've got powerful spin on this grass type Delmize. Does 130 damage. Giga Drain heal from this Pokemon the amount of damage you do to your opponent's active Pokemon. That's actually kind of funny. Uh, and they are going to be putting that Lele down. And looking for a Guzma, I guess. If I could knock out anything on my board, I think I would pick this Diancie here. I think that'd be the smartest thing for my opponent to pick. They do get the Diancie. So no wonder they were not concerned about that Bulu going down. That being said, they've only got, I mean, they've got no other attackers in play. If I just respond to this thing, they're going to be in a world of pain here. So that is just not good for them. I think, okay. This is interesting. They've got two abilities in play now. I either need to sledgehammer with my... It's a shame now that I, in retrospect, I just didn't see that coming. Uh, it's a shame now that I got rid of my Kakui and that my hand is too big, I think, to go fish out my... Um, to go fish out my beast energy, but we'll see what we can do. All right, so my opponent is going to be hit with Shrine there. I could have, I guess, now that I'm looking at it, I could Guzma and Sledgehammer for 150. Uh, yeah, I actually will knock out that. Now that I have this Choice Band in my hand, I will be knocking out my opponent's Lele, which seems good, uh, even though... Uh, I don't want to do that yet, though, because it actually makes my Weavile more powerful. I could knock out the Vika Vault, which obviously puts me in a pretty good situation. But then my opponent will just be able to uh, hit me again. So let's play this hand down and see where we're at. If I actually... I can go fish out a Kakui out of my deck. So I can knock this thing out, which I think is the best 
scenario for me. I have enough playable cards in my hand. So I think we just do this, this, this. And then let's smooth over. And we just need the other Kakui to be in my deck. So if it's not, that's that's problematic. It's not. Okay. So my other Kakui is gone. I've already attached for turn. At this point, I guess I'm just going to Guzma something. So let's... Uh, I think I am going to Guzma something. I guess I'm going to have to Guzma that um, the Vika Volt makes the most sense. And I think I'm just going to grab my Beast Energy just so that I have it. And that'll be in my hand. Good to go. Uh, and then I'm going to uh, Guzma the Vika Volt and then just instruct into my Beast energy just so that I have that next turn. And my opponents, you know, it, this is fine. We get to Sledgehammer, knocking out the Vika Volt's very good for us. And at this point, like, my opponent can knock out my Buzzwall, which is annoying, but they don't really have a backup plan. They've only got two cards in hand, and this thing cannot attack back to back. So although it's going to be very annoying, uh, you know, getting off my Beast turn right here, Oh, my opponent did rip that Cynthia, so that is good. They are stabilized now. They're going to be able to get themselves another Grubbin, which is interesting. And then I'm going to kind of have to... They have, wow, a lot of Delmize in here. I see, I see. Okay, this is uh, this is getting to be very interesting, especially if my opponent can just spawn another one of these... Uh, can spawn another one of these Vika Volts here pretty quickly. So let's just throw this Buzzwool up and go from there. Let's see what we're going to end up getting. I think I dropped this other Sneasel here. My opponent's going to have to... Okay, we've got ourselves a Guzma as well. Um, let's see here. If I could do 3060 is not enough to knock out this Grubbin. Unfortunately, that, uh, you know, my dude being knocked out is a crucial pain here. My Weavile's only doing 50 damage. This is a little bit devastating. I think I definitely do not Guzma. That seems wrong. And since I know that this thing is not attacking my active this turn, I think that I just Cynthia and we just get ourselves a bigger hand. So that's what I'm looking at here. I can evolve my other Marcargo. That's good. And then I actually have like a pretty decent hand here. I don't really need anything next turn. Um, I don't really need anything right now. I think I'm going to stack uh, something on top. I think I'm going to stack like a Buzzwall on top of my deck though just to have it next turn so that I'm kind of ready to go on. I guess I'd get the nest ball into my hand. Uh, or I could get the pal pad. Pal pad seems good as well so that I could just get some supporters back. Uh, I think I top deck the pal pad. I can put supporters back into my deck and then I can, you know, go get them if I want to, which seems good. I have the ultra ball in my hand so I can get whoever I want, whether it be that buzzwall, the weavile. Okay, let's do that. So we're going to do that. And then uh, I can just I can just slash hammer. So we're gonna like two hit KO this thing. I think. I mean, if I could get Kakui next turn, which I put the pal pad on top, so I could Kakui next turn. That is possible. Three prizes though. All I need to do is knock. Oh wow. Okay, I did not see this coming. <laughs> oh, the switch into the Tapu Koko. They're going to be able to respond again. I just, to be honest, I just did not think that they were going to have it like that. I thought attaching the beast energy to my active Boswell was going to make this thing safe, but we see my opponent has fully prepared themselves for <laughs> this buzz deck, which is absolutely wild, right? Absolutely wild. So even though their Lele is over here taking damage, I might not be able to deal with just this one Delmize, which is, uh, you know, could just spell disaster for me. So let's see here. I'm doing, I'm just not doing enough damage. I mean, this thing's only doing 50. I guess if I could Kui with the Weavile, we can make it happen. We can take this knockout and we might be able to get something for game. So let's do this. Yes, yeah, so let's, uh, yeah, let's put Pal Pad. We need Kakui back and we'll also take a Guzma. Oh, I had both Kakuis in the discard pile. I am, I am silly. All right. That's, that's why there wasn't one in the deck because I discarded one. So forgive me of that. Let's see. I think I have a Guzma in hand. I think I like both Kakuis in deck. That's good. And then we are going to Ultra Ball and we're going to 
get rid of Switch and Lily. I'm going to get rid of both these. And we're going to go and get ourselves the other Boswell there, which is good. And then we could bench that. And now I think, yeah, so we're doing 50 damage for the one Lele. They have, yes, if I Kukui, that's perfect. So let's go ahead, attach this there. We're going to smooth over, put Kukui on top of the deck, draw into it, knock this thing out. Then, you know, I haven't quite figured out what my game plan is to try and win this game. But, uh, yep, this is where we're at. So we're going to figure it out when we get there. I know that my opponent is going to be able to... Um, you know, I know that they're going to be able to knock this thing out with this guy next turn. And then if they just have a switch, they can knock out anybody in my deck. So that's uh, a little bit troubling. I think I need to, like, and I can't knock out, the, I can't knock out this thing here with my Buzzwool because my opponent has, uh, has very skillfully got rid of my Diancy, so they knew exactly what they were doing. So kudos to them for that. See, I'm going to put the Kukui back on top of my deck just to kind of have that there. We're going to evolve into another Weavile. And this is about as good as it gets. I think we just evil admonition here, 70 damage, take that knockout. Now we like have to get that Lele for game, but we just can't do enough damage to it. My opponent just doesn't need to put any more abilities into play. All they are going to need to do is just hit here and then they just need switch or guzma and it's game over so that that was wild i just can't believe that it went down like this they were very you know they didn't even need to gx me i just am very stunned so kudos to my opponent for that uh, i'm gonna be close but just not close enough unfortunately uh, they could pretty much just knock out whoever i think there's almost no reason uh, maybe I try to like Icy Wind and sleep them for a minute. Like that could be an option. Let's see here. So I think we do Guzma up this thing. I might not even have an energy left in deck. So uh, we're going to actually take a look there. Yeah, let's see. So we're going to let's smooth over here. Uh, see what my energy situation is. I have, yes, the one unit and another. So we'll do that. And then I think that I just, I, and I, I can't draw it this turn, so I am going to try an Icy Wind. I mean, I would have only done 50 damage to this thing, so I think that might be my only bet. And then let's smooth over, and we're going to put the, yeah, we're going to put that unit on top, sure. So we'll do this, and I guess if my opponent has Switch, they are good to go, so we'll instruct. And otherwise, you know, if they have Switch or Guzma, it's game over, but I mean, or if they just, like, wake up, there's, like, a bunch of ways out, but... It's, uh, you know, I think this is all I have. I get myself into these little situations quite a bit. I might not have navigated that perfectly, but I'm not going to lie. You know, my opponent really drew some flames there. They got everything they needed. I thought that I was going to be in the driver's seat that game, but their deck is just teched out completely for these Buzz Garb Shrine decks. Oh my gosh, these Weavile decks. The Delmai is getting in there. It even heals itself. I can't believe my opponent just busted out that switch on that turn. I felt so safe with my beast energy on the active. I was like, surely the only way they're attacking again is if they Guzma. And then the switch Coco, I just blown away i did not see that coming so wow okay all right so that's game one let's go ahead let's roll another game see how it goes i think even though these buzz shrine decks are just so good i mean they're incredible they really took care of all of the meta right like the meta meta decks they just destroyed them i think the meta just is going to evolve to a point that these just don't reign supreme for too much longer they are exploitable as you've seen if you just you know, unfortunately, your opponent just kind of has to dumb their deck down too. And that's just the way it goes. So like both decks, um, you know, I mean, you can't just go in playing just nothing but GXs versus these Buzzwool decks. And if you play all GXs, then this deck is built to take advantage of that. So these decks all need to be playing their own non-GX counterparts. My own Vika Ray list, I'm playing a couple copies of Shining Lugia to help with the, you know, help with these decks. It does help, but still not quite favored. We saw that Bulu deck is pretty much just completely non-GXs. I mean, there were multiple Delmise. There was Tapu Koko. The Tapu Koko can attack as well, does 100 damage, can easily knock out a Weavile as well. 
don't remember if I'm going first, so I'm just going to put that guy down. And my opponent is playing uh, another Vikavolt deck. I love Vikavolt, personally. I, I just think Vikavolt is an amazing card in this format. But uh, just what do you partner it with? Do you partner it with Bulu? Is, is, what about that Delmize? I didn't even know that that was a thing. Obviously, 130 damage is pretty much ideal in this format, and that's why I think Shining Lugia is so good as well, just because it has that ability to hit uh, 130 damage, which is perfect numbers for knocking out Buzzwalls. And we are just seeing Bulu City out here. Everybody has hopped ships. They're scared of Weavile, and everybody is now on Bulu City. So that is pretty wild, pretty wild how quickly metagames can evolve, right? And metagames just evolve so fast, so, so fast. So I think what we do here uh, is that we might Guzma and switch and then Ultra Ball. Yeah, we're going to bench this. We might Guzma and switch and Ultra Ball for, I can't actually do that. I should have probably Ultra Balled this guy away now that I'm like looking at it. Um, I could also just Ultra Ball away, switch and Guzma. I don't need to Guzma, I just would like to. Uh, and I need to get myself a, that's fine. Let's just do this. I need to get myself an Oranguru to start drawing cards. We don't really have anything else. So we need the Oranguru, very good. We're gonna get that. And then we're just going to attach the Fighting Energy, Shrine of Punishment, and let's just start drawing some cards. So we're going to do that. I was thinking that maybe bringing up the Lele would be good, but like you don't need to do that. It's fine. Like No point in putting that Choice Band down yet, just in case my opponent plays their own uh, Field Blower, even though pretty much nobody is playing Field Blower now. It's just Stadiums and Counter Stadiums. And one of the cool things about Bulu is that it just has... Oh, they called it right so there's a field blower insane you never know that's what i'm saying every single one of these decks is going to be different that's just the way it is with ptcgo and i don't know how people do this i feel like i never start to grub in a vika volt just in my <laughs> hand i like i was like very concerned i was like how is bulu vika volt going to set up right because you don't have tempest gx but apparently uh, my opponent is like yeah it doesn't matter i'll just you know i'll start to grub it and i'll just yeah we'll just be fine and we got a Vika Volt just stone cold in our hand. But as you guys can see, they do have three abilities out already, which is very good for me. And that's something that my opponent was able to not do uh, last game. So that was very big for them. You saw just having the two abilities in play was extremely good. I had that weird turn where I kind of had to Guzma the Vika Volt, and I should have known, I should have known that I. Um, that I didn't have my Kukui in the deck. So that was unfortunate, uh, but I wasn't really checking. So, oh, they're getting to, oh, this, <laughs> oh my gosh, this is absurd. They just, wow. Okay, so they're, uh, they got two Vika Volts, no problem. So there they go. They've got both Vika Volts ready to go. Turn two with no extra draw, none of that, just, uh, Good to go. So they're going to be able to just knock out this puzzle with strong charge, double strong charge, and they're going to electro cannon and just smoke me here. So that is uh, pretty wild, though. I do know that this is not a super sustainable board state for them. It's not like the easiest thing to do. So uh, they will have, you know, they will burn through a lot of energy doing this. So we'll see how that works out for my opponent if. I have to get myself into a situation where I just like Guzma and try to stall something. That's also an option. They've only got two cards in hand. So how good can they really be? You know, I, I don't know. But my opponent looks like they're kind of stalling out here. I don't know if maybe they're lagging out or they're deciding something. What is going on here, my dude? What do you what do you got? I don't know. So I feel like this happens quite a bit. It's been happening to me more lately. Yeah. So they just like stalled out. That was ridiculous though. They were going to have two weak volts knock me out. I mean, they had enough abilities in play that if I was able to respond with Weavile there, that was going to be game over for them. But Bulu, so many Bulus. How does the, the meta game just shift so fast these days? We were talking about it like years ago. It was just not like this at all. It was crazy. At the Sunday League Cup I went to, oh my gosh, speaking of League Cups, I 
bubbled at ninth place at both my league cups this weekend. That means I went 4-1-1. I ID'd my last round both days. Now, our, now I should not have ID'd on Sunday. I was just tired, and I was like, there's no way I'll bubble at ninth again. But then I did, and it was sad. But at least at the cup on Sunday, I did get top 16 points. So I am on the board for this season, guys. I've got myself... Uh, I've got myself some, yes, we're going to start the buzzwell. Got myself some points. Got six, you know, 20 points, I think, from getting ninth place yesterday. And then ninth, day, ninth place the day before was nothing. So let's go ahead. We're going to double nest ball here. Hello, Poka Ninja Swag. How are you? Let's get ourselves a Rangaroo. And then, uh, yeah, so we're going to start off doing that. And then we're also going to get ourselves probably a slugma here so that hopefully we can start evolving into more cargo and drawing through our deck so very good but it's crazy how like you know you start you start this right like the we wow this buzz we wow shrine stuff was all like just super meta breaking and relevant over the weekend people already had these decks sleeved up at the league cup on sunday and were playing them on sunday at the league cup and then uh now on this is monday that i'm filming this on monday they are already being countered like to the T on PTCGO. So like people are not having it, you know, the uh, <laughs> the Bulu decks are out here and we'll see how all this goes. It looks like my opponent is playing a Duskmane Magnazone deck. I think this deck is super cool if it can set up, but that's another one of my concerns. Just uh, Weavile is a huge concern of mine in this format. How many, you know, how can you really set up uh, without using too many abilities? I guess Steven's Resolve is the answer there. And we're seeing more. Oh, and they have Metal Frying Plan. They've called my bluff. They know that I am not playing Field Blower. So they've got, they are teched. They've got this Metal Frying Pan in there. And you know what? I can't do anything against that Metal Frying Pan. Yep, that's just it. I think that this is going to be another horrible, horrible matchup. I am not, yeah, I'm not going to lie. I, I don't super like these uh like these buzzwell shrine decks i think that you know i think that they were like an insane medical and i think that maybe some of them will do well at philadelphia but i don't really think that they have a lot of longevity i think they're probably just going to get very countered i think they'll be like in and out of the meta you know like there'll be cards that uh and i just know i know that they're knocking out my buzzwell this turn and i know that my buzzwell is just like not doing anything to them so that's fine. You know what? Sometimes that happens. So uh, I could have instructed for one there. I'm just going to Cynthia first and see what we get in case I'm able to write instruct into something meaningful. So we'll do this. Uh, this is actually a good hand for me. And I also have choice bands. So I'm going to be able to poke this thing for some damage if I want to, uh, which seems fine. I think I'm going to bench my other Sneasel. That seems good. And we're going to evolve into Macargo, which also seems good. I think that I want to, let's acro bike, see what we get off of that uh, unit and another Sneasel. I think my opponent uh, has gonna have the two abilities in play. That just seems like it's going to be more damage long-term. Uh, I do need to be a little bit careful with my energy, but I think that grabbing the Sneasel here seems, let's see. I mean, I'm, I am gonna want another Buzzwell here eventually. So let's uh let's just grab I mean how many weebiles am I really gonna get out? Let's grab that. That's fine. And then I think that yeah, I'll just smooth over, stack something to the top of my deck this next turn. So let's do I could stack a I guess I could stack a shrine. I definitely want shrine here eventually. But I know that they play uh, I know that they play stadium, so there's no point. Let's just smooth over. We'll stack a sh oh, I do want that. Dianti, but I'm not I'm not thinning this hand down at all for sure. So let's just get the Dianti for next turn, or we want a Buzzwell for next turn. We want a Buzzwell for next turn because we're going to want to sledgehammer once my opponent has taken two prizes. So they're going to take this guy first, uh, and then they're going to take a Weavile probably. Weavile is going to get in there and do a little something, and then I need to sledgehammer. And that's just, uh, that's kind of like our order of operations here. That's what's going on. But we can't see that this is all setting up very good. I mean, the deck in general is doing what it's supposed to do, not having any problems in that regard. 
It's just that my opponents are all very hip. And this is insane. I swear. I just like, I don't draw this good ever. If I, I guess they just, they did Steven Resolve for it. They just had most of it in their hand already. And now they're just ready to go. They just had, they went and Steven's Resolved for her Lady. <laughs> and, uh, and probably a rare candy or something. And then they're just, you know, they're good to go. They're just going to go through and they're just going to Meteor Tempest like a bunch of these things over and over and over again and that is insane that is nuts so that's fine this is this is totally fine i'm not worried about it at all so we we stacked that buzzwell there we want him right there front and center very good and i will attach this here uh, just to have it and now i can smooth over and draw into something i don't want to put my diancy down yet i think probably Guzma will be good. I mean, I want to eventually Guzma something. I want to like Guzma something. I need a shrine. So let's go get ourselves a shrine. Yeah, we're going to smooth over here. Get ourselves that shrine this turn. Start doing a little bit more damage. That'd be great. Sure. And then we're going to draw into the shrine. Excellent. Saving this beast energy in my hand for next turn when we are taking advantage of our, uh, you know, taking advantage of our sledgehammer turn. So Let's just evil admonition here. Yep, doing 70 damage. Yikes. So that's not good. And obviously we can knock this thing out with Buzzwool next turn. That's not going to be a problem. But I'd rather, you know, if I'm going to be sledgehammering for like, what, 150, I'd rather be doing it to something with no damage counters on it. So I think I'm going to fish for Guzma next turn and hit into a clean necrozma kind of like spread my damage around a little bit and just hope that my opponent does not heal at all so they've got cynthia now they're drawing extraordinarily well this is pretty much an ideal scenario every ability deck just wants this they want to be able to have just one ability you know two abilities in play you know tops but this is uh this is definitely great and this is what my last opponent was able to do to me as well. They just had the one Vika Volt, one Lele, no problem. So they didn't even take the knockout. So this is actually extraordinarily good for me. Uh, so we're just going to stack a Guzma on top of our deck. And I don't want to put my Beast Energy down yet because if this thing gets Guzma, I'm going to be very sad. So I'm not going to do that. I think I'm just going to take this knockout on my opponent's active while I can. So let's smooth over. Let's stack a Guzma on top of the deck. And that way, you know, I could Guzma for whatever I want next turn. Uh, I probably will end up knocking out the active now that I'm thinking about it. Let's get a Kukui on top. Uh, I think that since we're knocking out this thing here, I definitely, I'm just going to get a Kukui. And then we'll definitely, we'll just be able to take out whatever my opponent throws at me. So let's do that. Evil Admonition. For knockout, I don't even need the choice band here. We're good to go. I'm going to save that choice band for this Buzzwall 2 and... And there we go. We've got a backup Buzzwell, backup Shrine. This is all great. I've got the Ultra Ball in my hand, so I know that I'll be able to Macargo into whatever I want next turn. So that's very good. My opponent throws up the Lele. I wonder if that means that either A, they have Guzma, which is what I was worried about, which is why I didn't put that Beast Energy down yet, because once that thing's gone, it's just gone. So we definitely wanted to be careful about that. They could also just throw two energy onto the Lele, be a little bit conservative, and just uh, energy drive my Weavile for knockout. We see that my opponent is playing this uh, Oracorio that just gets them two basic energy cards. So that is interesting as well. And that is going to allow them to accelerate onto their Lele and energy drive my Weavile for knockout. But now they have an additional ability in play. So now my Sneasel, uh, if I actually evolve that into a Weavile, can take a pretty significant knockout. So what I would, oh, they're accelerating to the bench. So they've got a Guzma play coming up. I was going to say, if they do that, I would definitely prefer to Guzma around this Lele. I'm not trying to knock this Lele out. I want to knock out Pokemon that don't have abilities so that my opponent, um, you know, will have as many abilities in play as possible. And that would be very good for me, just sweeping late game because Weavile just, does more damage for the amount of abilities that my opponent has in place. So that would be very good. Let's see, they've got an energy on the active and they 
are going to be able to GX this turn, but or they won't GX, they'll just slash. They're gonna claw slash, knock out my weave out here, but that just feels bad. I mean, we saw my one Bulu opponent was very well positioned against me because they were able to throw up non GX Pokemon that one hit KO'd my guys, but now my opponent's throwing up big GX Pokemon that two hit KO some of my guys. And that is a real feel bad situation. So this thing's got 190 clean hit points. I think we got it this turn. Yeah. So let's do, uh, we've got Kakui. So we've also got the Shrine. Let's go ahead and throw that Shrine into play. Then we are also going to, well, let's bench this other Buzzwole as well. We've got the Beast Energy. So that's 150, 180, and Shrine. That's just a knockout. I don't even need the Kakui. So I could just save the Kakui. So let's see. It's not letting me click here, which is being a little bit, come on. There we go. All right. My mouse was being a little bit funny there. It was not letting me click that beast energy. So let's see. 120, 150. Uh, we could get this choice band. It's not letting me. Oh my gosh. My computer made me misclick. And I. Uh, this is being very buggy. But I like had to try and drag that choice band up to my buzzwell three times. And then it like misclicked and went on to the Oranguru. So rip ptcgl but that's fine i actually have other ways to do this i don't i have kukui and i have a million ways i just look very silly with that choice band on my orangaroo right now so let's see we're sledging on 150 170 let's just go get that diancy sure no my gosh okay now i'm really that's fine this is fine i meant to smooth over my mouse is being all sorts of insane uh <laughs> like meant to click smooth over and it instructed but it ended up not mattering we're doing 130 uh <laughs> we've got it all right we do 150 170 let's uh smooth over and then kukui let's not be bad um, my mouse just went absolutely haywire for like an entire turn and was like literally clicking whatever it wanted to. Uh, so that's great, but that's, it's fine. That's part of playing on PTCGO is like, you know, lag and all sorts of fun business like that. So let's go get ourselves. I think I want like a Weavile for the following turn. I want one of these and I want the Weavile. I already have the Ultra Ball in my hand, so I know that I'll be able to, oh, we need Rescue Stretcher. So let's, uh, yeah, let's get Rescue Stretcher. And we'll be able to throw the Weavile back into our, you know, back into play here eventually. So that would be good. And I have an Ultra Ball in my hand already. So yeah, let's get that. And then I'm going to throw some guys back into the deck. We're going to Kukui. Oh my gosh, it's still doing it. It's like not letting me click and drag. It's like making it so that I just, I have to like click the card and then it goes, you know, where, and like it's not letting me click and drag. Usually I click and drag things, but it's like for some reason is not allowing me to do that right now. So I would like, and that worked as quick. I don't know what in the world's going on. I'm going to shuffle three Pokemon back into my deck. I want all three of these back into my deck. That's fine. And now we're just going to Sledgehammer for Knockout. So we got there, even without the Choice Band, who I wanted to be on there, and then almost tossed it because my mouse decided to go to Instruct, and then I was clicking it quickly, so I just instructed instead of Smooth Over. So major yikes, almost tossed that one, but that's fine. We got there. We're still fine. Good to go. Now my opponent's Zap Cannon here can do 130 damage, so that is very annoying for my Buzzwole, who has exactly 130 hit points, but at this point, I should be able to just clean up this game on this Lele here and just evolve into Weavile, Ultra Ball, you know, get Guzma, and just finish it off. So that should be how I'm able to win. If my opponent decides to Guzma and knock out somebody, like knock out the Sneasel, which is like my worst case scenario, or I guess they could knock out my Macargo, which is also annoying because then I'm not guaranteed Guzma for game. I think I'm still so far ahead at this point that there's like no way that my opponent can come back from this. I should just be good to go. And you know they just had too many GXs in play. The stack attack is cool and all, but I just think that they have too many abilities, too many GXs. They're playing into exactly what I want them to do. So I don't, you know, I just don't think that they're going to be able to come back from this at all. I've only got two prizes. They've got a ton of GXs out. They can't heal everybody. They do have, and now they have even more abilities in play. Now they have like, uh, well, and a four, so I'm doing 200. Oh, with this, I have one, two, three, four, five abilities in play, 250 damage with my Weavile. So that's, uh, that's just a clean knockout on whoever I want. Unless, of course, they Guzma my Sneasel this turn. They did not, though. They passed. They don't have it like that. I don't know whether or not that pass was intentional, 
That is part of PT, and my mouse is still being funny, so I'm gonna have to investigate this. But we need to get this Wii Vial. We need to we need to complete a game when they scooped. Okay, I was gonna say because like I'm trying to like click things and it's not going. I was like I need to play this hand right and I need to smooth over and instruct it to the things I need. So my game's being very glitchy. That's good. It's about time for me to end this video anyway, so I will check that out and see what's going on. But again, this is Nicolas's uh, top four deck from the Brazil Regional Championship. So shout out to Nicolas. He's an incredible player. Got top eight at the World Championships this year as well. So major kudos to Nicolas for piloting another amazing deck on another amazing run here. And I know Former world champion uh, Diego Casiraga also finished in the top 16 of this Brazilian uh, regional championship with the same list. So great list, proven list. Uh, we saw that, you know, we were, well, we did pretty good. I mean, we set it up the way it was supposed to, but that first matchup just super, super teched out. I cannot believe that they had that switch. I just, the switch Coco play was just, just mind blown. Didn't know that they just had it like that in that hand. So, uh, they were they were drawing very well, but lots of Bulu out here. So interesting. What do you guys think of that? Oh, I decided I could start doing this, right? I could like turn off my logo so you guys can see like the top right card in my deck list. So that's pretty cool. Anyways, thank you all for watching the video. Make sure to like the video, sub to the channel, ring that bell. Let me know what you guys think of this deck in the comments below. You guys love the deck, hate the deck, love Shrine decks, hate Shrine decks. Let me know. I tend to ugh, uh, no, not a big fan though. I do love the Shrining Lugia deck. I think that deck is a lot of fun in my personal opinion and uh yeah make sure to check out the etsy store and the patreon stuff in the description below peace